Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to install MSYS2 and MinGWW64 on Windows and how to run C and C++ files using Visual Studio Code. So MSYS2 is a development environment that contains a collection of tools and libraries. For example, it contains several Linux tools that you can execute on Windows such as LS, RM, MV, CAT, CP and others. It also contains the make tool which is required to build C and C++ projects. So after installing MCS2 we can install additional tools like MinGWW64 to start building C and C++ applications. Finally, in this video I will show you how to configure Visual Studio Code to run C and C++ files. So first of all, let's type MCS2 and let's hit enter. Now let's go to this first link and here we have an introduction to this MCS2. So let's scroll down and here we have the different installation steps that we will follow in this video. So first of all we need to download the installer. So let's click on this link. And here we need to save this installer, but in my case I have already downloaded it, so I will cancel this download. Now we have to follow the other steps, and for example when we choose the installation folder we have to respect these constraints. For example we should not use letters with accents, and also we should not use spaces in the installation path. So let's go to the installer. And this is it, I have just to run it. So in this window I have just to click on next. Then here I will accept this default path for the installation. Then let's click on next. Then let's click next again. And now we need to wait till the end of the installation. Now the installation finished correctly, so let's click on finish. Of course we need to check this box, so let's click on finish. Then in this window we have to execute a command that is available on the documentation website. So let's go to the navigator and let's scroll down. And here we need to copy this command. Now let's paste it here. And let's hit enter. Now let's type Y and let's hit enter. And now we need to type Y again. So let's hit enter. And now we need to start MCS2 again. So let's go to the folder where it is installed. It is on the C drive into a folder called MCS64. So here let's scroll down and let's execute this application. It is called mcs2.exe. Now in this window I have to execute the next command. So let's go to the website and let's scroll down. And here we need to execute this command. So let's copy it. And let's execute it. Now let's hit enter. And here let's type y. And now we need to install MinGWW64. So let's go to the navigator and let's scroll down and let's copy this command. Let's paste it here and let's hit enter. Now let's hit enter and enter again. Now let's type Y and let's hit enter. Now we need to wait till the download and the installation of MinGWW64. Now the installation finished correctly after about 10 minutes. So let's close this window. And now we need to add MCS2 and MinGWW64 to the system environment variables. So let's go to the folder where we installed MCS2. It is this folder. 
and let's open the folder called MinGW64, which is this one. Now let's open the bin folder, and we need to copy this path to add it to the system environment variable. So let's copy it. Now let's go to system, then advanced system settings. In this window, I have just to click on environment variables. Then I have to find the path variable, which is this one. Now let's edit it. And at the beginning of this field, I will paste the path to provide it with the highest priority. Also, I will add a semicolon as the separator between the different values. Now let's go back to the folder where MCS2 is installed. So let's go back to MCS64. Now let's go to the folder USR. Then let's open the bin folder. So this folder contains several Linux-like tools and also it contains the make tool. So we need to add it to the system environment variable. So let's copy it and let's paste it here. Also, let's add a semicolon and let's click on OK. Let's click on OK again, then OK. And now let's close this window. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code. So in my case, Visual Studio Code was opened before the beginning of the installation. That's why I need to restart it. So let's close it and let's open it again. So now I need to install two extensions. The first one is called CC++ and the second one is called Code Runner. So let's click on this extensions button and here let's type CC++. Now let's select this first result and as you can see it is an extension from Microsoft and it has been downloaded and installed this number of times. So we need just to install it. So this extension provides useful features such as code completion, syntax highlighting and also debugging. As you can see it is now installed correctly so let's close this page and let's create a new C++ file. So let's hide the extensions, let's go to file, let's open a new folder. So I will create a new folder on the desktop that I will call CPP project. Now let's hit enter, let's select this folder and let's click on this select folder button. Now the folder is empty for the moment, so to create a new C++ file I have just to click on this button and I will call it main.cpp. Let's hit enter. Now here the file is empty, so let's write some C++ code. Now let's add the statement that allows us to print hello to the user. Now let's ask the user to provide his name. And now let's read the name of the user. And finally let's print the name of the user as a confirmation. Now let's save this file. So to save it I have to click on Ctrl plus S. Or also I can go to File, then Save. Now to run this C++ file, I cannot find here the run button and also if I make a right click, I cannot find the run file option. So for this reason, I need to install a new extension. So let's go to extensions and here let's type code runner. So let's select this first extension. It is from this developer. It has been downloaded and installed this number of times. So to install it, let's click on this install button. Now the extension is installed correctly, so let's close this page. We can also hide the extensions and show the explorer. Now as you can see, we have this button that allows us to run this C++ file. So let's click on it. And here we have this hello world message. And also it is asked to provide the username. So this output is printed in the output tab, but here if I try to type any text, I cannot type anything. This is because this output tab does not allow the user to provide an input. So to fix this, I have first to stop this application. So to stop it, I can make a right click, then stop code, or also I can click on this stop button. So let's click on this button. We can also close uh, this terminal. Now to fix this we have to go to file, then preferences, then settings. Now we have to expand extensions 
and to find run code configuration so this is run code configuration we have to click on it then we need to find the option run in terminal so this is run in terminal we have to check this box now let's close the settings now here if I click on this run button or also if I make right click then run code we can see that the code is executed in the terminal tab so we have to wait till the end of the execution of our source code now here we have this hello world message and it is asked to provide a name so let's type bill gates for example and let's hit enter and here we have the confirmation of the name now the application finished it correctly so we can close this terminal and this time let's create a new C file so let's click on this new file button and I will create a file called test.c now let's hit enter and here let's type some C code now let's save this file and to run it let's click on this run button and here as you can see this is the output of our C file finally thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to the channel